Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 and in this video we're going to be previewing this year's St. Ledger, the final classic of the season at Doncaster on Saturday and I'll be previewing all the leading contenders for this year's renewal. We'll go through some of my thoughts and feelings on them and I'll give you my final top three for the race. Now I will say that we don't know the final declarations at this stage. This is because at the time of recording it's on a Tuesday and the reason I'm not doing it nearer the time is this week after today is going to be really busy for me. I'm doing a lot of travelling. I'm actually going up to Doncaster for Thursday's uh, race meeting there because I'm teaming up with the Silk Series and it's the Silk Series final and I've been uh, teaming up with them throughout the summer making a massive documentary about female jockeys so I'm going there for the second uh, time they've ever had the Silk Series actually so yeah it's going to be really good and I'm looking forward to seeing who will be crowned champion but the pinnacle obviously of this uh, four day race meeting is the St Ledger on the Saturday and I'll uh, go through the leading contenders starting with this year's current favourite which is Q Gardens and now he's run about a 5-4 to four shot with bookmakers at the moment trained by Aidan O'Brien he'll be looking for another winner after having trained Capri to victory last year now this is um, an interesting uh, thought for me really because a few months ago I thought Q Gardens was definitely a leading contender coming into the race and I'm not really a big um, advocate of um, anti-post betting but this made me get some money out because I really liked the price at the time. I'm on him at 10 to 1 each way anti-post and I'm definitely expecting he'll make the frame, no question there. But after he was interviewed after his Queen's Vars run at Royal Ascot, Aidan O'Brien targeted this horse for the St. Ledger and he went on record to saying that this would be a nice race for Kew Gardens in the autumn, meaning that it was probably his most likely horse that was going to win the St. Ledger and the one he felt that was up to the task. Now, after that run, it went to Longchamp, it won its Group 1 in good style, so massive tick there. And then last time was a little bit strange, but however, it did kind of seem that he's going to appreciate um, the step up and trip because he finished third in the Great Voltager at York behind Old Persian who we'll get into in a minute but if you actually go um, back on to that run that day and you watch the race replay Q Gardens travelled really well throughout the race and then he just got outpaced for a moment and then he had to be pushed along to keep in the race and he ran on in the end really um, staying on really strongly and he's definitely going to want the trip also as well the key to him is good to firm ground or good ground if there's any cut in the ground then I would probably be uh, putting question marks to him because when he's ran on uh, softer ground he doesn't really like it and all his best form has come on a dry surface. Now the current conditions for Doncaster at the moment according to the weather forecast is there should be some rain on the Tuesday and the Wednesday this week around which could maybe get into the ground but then after that it's meant to be dry as a bone. It's not going to be baking and scorching it should just be decent good ground on the day so Kew Gardens really should get his um his um his uh ground that he really likes but I thought five to four maybe a little bit short and I could maybe see something coming out of the woodwork uh, to beat him to beat him I've actually done um, research into all these horses running and I think this could be a little bit more competitive um, than first meet CI the second favourite in the betting is Larty Dar for John Gosden, who I'm really impressively on our reappearance at York now. This horse has got a few uh, different entries. It's got an entry for the Ark, it's got an entry for the St. Ledger, also as well had a entry in over in Ireland this weekend, but it won't be going to Ireland. I think it will either be the St. Ledger or it might go to the Ark trial and then go on to run in the Ark in October but Larty Dart the price is 10 to 3 not bad is undefeated three wins from three was the Oaks favorite you might remember until um she sustained uh, her injury but the thing I would want to go against here is that Phillies even though she will get the Phillies allowance if she does run two Phillies have only ever won this race and that was in 1992 and in 2015 when Rafe Beckett had simple verse and I just thought the stats against Phillies in this race was a little bit of a question mark and even though Lati Dar has been very impressive and even though she did put that big field to bed I think we're going really on here on John Gosden himself as a trainer and he's no doubt capable of producing a horse like Lati Dar to do these kind of big races but I think I would have liked to have seen an extra race 
um, in La Tida before I would really nail my colours to the mast with her. But she is a very good horse. There's no doubt about that. And also as well, she's really got to step up on that trip slightly. She hasn't raced over a mile and a half yet. We then look at other contenders. We've got the Godolphin pair in here, next in the Bessing. Six to one old person who's won the great Vol Voltage at York. And also as well, the King Edward, um, the seventh at a Royal Ascot now. Again, both performances have been good. I think the ground is also quite key to the horse. I think good ground will definitely suit it. Charlie Appleby as well has already had a stellar season, winning the derby with Massar and getting the Godolphin operation back among the classic winners. But I'm not sure about Old Persian. I, I don't know if it will completely stay the trip. I think maybe a mile and a half could be its ultimate trip. And I think there could be some stronger stairs in it. Loxley again... I'm not sure he, if he does turn up, he will uh, get the trip. He won a Group 2 in Dover last time out, however, but when he ran um, in the Bahrain Trophy uh, behind Wells Fargo, who isn't unfortunately going to be in the race after uh, really uh, being heavily fancied by quite a few uh, shrewd uh, operators out there, I'm not sure, again, he will quite get home. Then we've got Latrobe, 9-1, to one, trained by Joseph O'Brien, the Irish Derby winner. I think that was a little bit of a fluke uh, that day, even though, to be fair to him, he did he did his job nicely. I'm, I'm still got question marks on the horse. I wasn't impressed with its run last time out. And, um, yeah, I think this horse, uh, Latrobe, might have a lot of work to do. Southern France... Could be an interesting contender, but I think this horse probably wants two miles. I think it will stay. He could maybe be one that makes the frame, but again, at 10 to 1, would I really want to be backing him? Probably only each way if I, if I had to have a bet. He maybe could make the first three or four, but I'm really not expecting him to win. Flag of Honour, on the other hand, could be an interesting one. Won the Irish St. Lurger trial last time out. Again, a similar price of 10 to 1. And I think this horse could be a banging contention. DXB is another horse, second in the derby. One of the best pieces of form in the race. However, uh, since then, he's been up and down. He ran a peculiar race in the Irish derby. And then at uh, Glorious Goodwood uh, last time out behind Cross Counter. Who knows what was going on there? I think cutting the ground is key to this horse. And I don't think he's going to get his ground that he would ultimately want. But if it was softish, I would be interested definitely at the prices. We then go to Raymond Tusk, who I think is one to make the frame. He won a listed race at Hamilton a couple of starts ago. He ran in the Eclipse, even though um, he never uh, was in the frame that day. But he still ran with credit there. And then he finished a second last time out. And he was closing down at the end. And I think he's definitely going to be an ideal stare. Trained by Richard Hannon, who's a shrewd trainer. And I could definitely see this one making the frame. So it could be a good each way bet if you wanted to take on Q Gardens. Made up another interesting contender, trained by Andrew Bolden, and this horse won a Group 3 last time out at Goodwood when I was there that day in a free run race. I don't think the form's really worth that much, and um, even though Made Up has uh, been pretty good, did a good run uh, behind a pilaster at a glorious Goodwood uh, when I was there that day, finished in second place. I think, again, records of Phillies definitely speaks for itself. And even though it has won um, a handicap at the course earlier in the year, it's going to have to find a lot, lot more improvement, really. And I think made up personally should be more of a 25 to 1 shot, in my opinion, even though... Yes, it has done well, but I I, I can see other horses uh, beating um, uh, that selection there. We then go to Giuseppe Garibaldi, who again I think is just going to be used as a pacemaker in the race. I think the same could be said about the Pentagon if he turns up. I don't really see them um, landing in a blow. However, I'm going to put this horse up, the next one um, that was on my list in the betting, as my dark horse of the race. And it's a horse called Bruntland. Now, this one is 25 to 1, but makers at the moment. Trained by Charlie Appleby. Very interesting horse, this one. Very lightly raced. And its only entry for future races, as it currently stands, is in the St. Ledger. And it looks like this could have been an under the radar target. Very interesting. It won its um, first ever appearance on the Roly Mile circuit at Newmarket in quite impressive style. Then it went to France last time out and it won a 
listed race a few weeks ago and I just wonder if that was a prep run for this horse. If you look at its breeding it might not have the pedigree of a stayer but it's interesting it's got the entry, it's a massive price, it's trained by Charlie Appleby and it looks like they've kept this one quiet because they've targeted some races towards the end of uh, the season and they're having a campaign in the autumn part of the flat uh, racing season so for me Bruntland at 25 to 1 could be a good speculative each way bet and I just think that one could be a bit of a shrewd one there and I might put that into my top three so we'll see what we go for at the end we then go to Nelson 33 to 1 I think ground's key to him they're going to want rain but unless any showers maybe uh are in the forecast that do um, suddenly appear towards the end of the week. Don't think Nelson's going to make the frame. Prashima ran well, to be fair, in the Melrose, finishing in third place at York. Trained by Tom Daskin. Don't think it's probably... It might finish in the midfield, but don't think it's really going to make much of an impact. And then we got Zabriski at 66-1. to 1. And, yeah, again, Zabriski by Frankel, but hasn't really shown anywhere near um, the ability to win a St. Ledger. So... Uh, yep, by process of elimination, we do go back to Kew Gardens, but I wouldn't be surprised if something we've just been through maybe could step up. Maybe one of the Aiden O'Brien improvers like Flag of Honor could maybe come through. Also as well, maybe I could have been wrong about Old Persian, Loxley even, DXB, Raymond Tusk. I could have been wrong about a few of these, but they're just my personal opinions. But yeah, my number one, I'm going to stick with it, will be Kew Gardens as my most likely winner. I'm going to say that Lati Dar doesn't turn up for the St. Ledger. Again, I could be proved wrong, but I probably would just be against her for the victory. I think she would make the frame if she ran, but I think there could be just something out there that could just uh, slightly better. So it's going to be Kew Gardens number one. And I'm actually going to go with uh, Bruntland as uh, number two in second place. I think this horse is really under the radar, been underestimated. And I wouldn't be surprised maybe if um, they do go for the final declaration in this race. Maybe a little bit of money coming in because of that fact. So yeah, that's going to be the selection there. I'll probably go in third place, Flag of Honour. I think these could be the typical Aidan O'Brien horses that improve for the right time and be there in the right time to win the race. So for me, even though Yaku Gardens is the number one, I thought Flag of Honor would run a good race and probably will make the frame to finish in third place. So yeah, that's going to be my uh, top three. Q Gardens, Bruntland, and then I'm going to go in third place, Flag of Honor. But like I've already said, I wouldn't be surprised if old Persian maybe made the frame. The Trobe could. So many of these could make the frame, but... They're going to be my final three. We did all right last week in the Haydock Sprint Cup where we had the Tin Man and Gustav Klimt and hopefully we can have another good one on our preview here. So anyway, let me know in the comments box below who's going to finish in your top three of the St. Ledger. I'd like to know what you guys want to think. Also as well, please subscribe to my YouTube channel here at Lucky Loaders 15. Also as well, you can follow me on Twitter at Lucky Loaders 15 so you don't miss any of my Twitter work that I do, which I will be doing plenty of over the next couple of days. So go and follow me on Twitter my handle is at Lucky Load 15 and also all I've got to say so please gamble responsibly hopefully we can have a good St. Ledger this year and we'll be seeing you soon